Hi, this is Mark from Fedas and Fur Express. In this video, we'll go over the proper labeling for a crate for international moves for our pets. Um, here we have a large 700 crate, fits most large breeds. And here we have a small 200 crate, fits most cats and most small breed animals. So the first thing we look at to is we'll get to is the stickers. Every crate has to have these up arrow stickers, labeling that uh, the crate should not be flipped over this way up. And every crate also should have one of these live animal stickers. If there's any live animal in a crate going, it should have one of these stickers on all sides. So there's one here, and then one back here, and then one on the other side. Notice that these up arrows also have to be on the back of the crate as well. Um, the same thing with the live animal sticker it goes on the other side, all three sides of the crate. Some airlines require you to have one of these from and to stickers. It just labels the from and the to, the address information and so forth, the last time the pet was fed. Another common sticker is one of those live animal stickers. People usually circle um, the pet and then write their pet name underneath on the content section. Um, so the same thing goes for the small crate. You have the arrows stickers on the front and the arrow stickers on the back. And then you have the live animal stickers on all sides of the crate. Um, so the next thing to go over is the inside bedding of the crate. I had a regulation states that there has to be an absorbent material inside the crate. Um, so here at Feathers and Fur Express, we cut out a piece of cardboard and we place it in, lining up on the inside. We tell most people to add another blanket or um, a padding that the pet's used to sleeping on. That way it's a little more comfortable than you're not just sleeping on a cardboard material. And the same thing with the smaller crate as well. And then <clears throat> the next thing, next thing we go over is the bowls. We here at Feathers Fur Express, we use these hardy, sturdy bowls and we attach them, we zip tie them to the inside of the, the gate. That way some animals get in there and they, they get anxious, they start pawing down. And these are pretty solid, they're in there, they're not going anywhere. So you want something sturdy and something uh, hard um, to be able to resist scratching or, um, or pawing down. And we also attach a funnel on the outside, that way the airlines can fill in the water for the pet as they sit around and wait in the tarmac or in a room or something like that. Um, sometimes when you order a crate, these water containers come with them. Those are good containers for a small cat or a small dog. They attach on the inside of the small crates. And we tend to use them sometimes, um, but try to get something a little more sturdier. Sometimes these containers are a little bit um, more sturdier, they're harder, they're thicker plastic. We use those as well, those are acceptable. And then avoid using something like this. So this is a, a common Tupperware. It's a bit flimsy. I mean, you can use it if you want, but dogs can scratch and, and then, and then uh, shake on this, and then this can break and then come out, and they can cut their hands and their paws. So we try not to use something so flimsy like this. Um, those are the, the common bowl types. Next, we'll go over some important paperwork that needs to be attached on top of the crate um, as you prepare the crate for international travel. So the first thing here you notice is the labeling for the pet. It's nice to have some information here, the pet's picture, the name, whether they're friendly or not, where they're going, where from, the date, and the reservations numbers, and just the last time they were fed and so forth. Just basic information just to identify the pet um, on a quick glance. And if you look back here, we have uh, a zip tie with food and then a bag for a leash and a collar and then underneath that we have what says copy of health documents. So let's go over the the, the food. You want to put your food in a zip tie, zip a ziplock type bag. It doesn't have to be necessarily a zip tie but it could be just a regular plastic bag and put some basic instructions, feeding instructions in there. For example, feed one cup twice a day and something like that. Um, and then um, the, another, another bag next to it will be the leash and um, the collar. And then the, uh, the paperwork underneath says copy of health documents. We like to make copies of health documents and attach it to the top of the crate just in case the originals get lost or misplaced. That way the pet has some sort of identification, some sort of information um, that gets attached um, on top of the crate. 
And when you do this, try to keep the opening of the food um, to the outside, either this way or that way. Um, that way, when you finally tape everything together and secure it on the crate, um, when it gets to the layaway or the transit, they don't have to rip everything apart. They can just open the ziplock and feed the pet. And instead of doing something like this and then taping over it, that way the people can handle it a little more um, user friendly. And then here you have uh, the airlines will attach um, the original endorsed health certificate, the individual airway bill, all the information that the airline takes from you, they will place it in one of those large stick-on uh, bag and they will tie it or uh, stick it to the top of the crate. And you can see pretty quickly how this gets filled right away. Um, on this crate this big, it's okay, it's fine, it's, there's plenty of, uh, of uh, room here. But when you're dealing with a crate smaller, a 200 crate, you can see how fast and how quickly um, this gets filled up. So if you have your food in the back, the leash in the collar back here, and then you tie it, and then you place the large original paperwork here. Just be aware that the airlines need some room in the front to attach the original copies uh, when you give it to them. And you can secure everything on the back end of the crate. So let's go over one, one more time the final checklist of preparing your pet for travel, preparing the crate. The first thing is the stickers. Make sure you label the arrow stickers up, the live animal stickers, and the to and from stickers, and another live animal stickers. The airlines will supply these stickers. If you're not using a shipping company or a transport company, if you show up with a crate, the airlines usually have those stickers on hand. They don't expect people to um, to go out and get those stickers themselves. And then the padding material from the inside, make sure you pad your inner crate with something absorbent. The bowls, secured on the inside of the crate, sturdy and tight bowls. Funnel is not... Um, required, but we place it here um, for the easement of watering. And then the pertinent information, all paperwork attached on top of the crate, basic information, the pet, all original documents used and labeled by the airlines. And then you have your food, your copies of your health documents, your leash and your collar, everything stacked up and taped on the back of the crate. Be sure to leave a room to access the food and the leash. In this case, you can access the leash from the back and you can access the food or the leash like this. So this is how a crate would look up, uh, look finally set up and done and your pet will be ready for travel. Good luck and safe travels.